Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's been a month since Street Fighter 6 has released, and I took to Twitter to see if you guys had any questions that maybe lowly old Brian F here could help clarify for you. And turns out you guys actually had a lot of questions regarding the game. It's a brand new game with a lot of interesting system mechanics and a lot of interesting features. And so we're all learning the game at the same time. There's way too many questions here that I could hope to possibly get to in one video. I was actually shocked at how many questions I got. So what I did is I pre-selected some of these these questions while scrolling through it uh, that I felt were either represented in multiple tweets here or just had some salient po points that I wanted to get across and hopefully you guys learned something from this video. So let's go ahead and get on into it. So the first one, Chelsea Bites asks, Manon's heavy target combo has been my go-to way to get a command grab off, but people who've seen it know to jump. What can I throw out to mix it up instead of the command grab? All right, this is a great question. So if you're new to the whole concept of the command grab mix up, and uh, basically just mix ups in general, this situation will actually help explain a lot of how this works. Okay, she's referring to this target combo, right? You can actually hit confirm this. It's actually a great uh, sequence from Manon. Pulls them in right to your grill, right? And when you have them in your grill like that, you can then do the command grab, which I believe is a yeah, half circle back punch, right? And this is great because if you look at the frame data for this, it leaves you at plus three. So you see the teal three frame, advantage three frame on that top bar, you're plus three, which means you get to move three frames before the opponent can in this situation. I'm gonna turn on reversal after damage here. I'm, I'm gonna have JP here do crouching light punch, which is his fastest move. And all you gotta do, do this. And you see here, the command grab will beat the button. Here's some uh, another option they could choose to do. I'm gonna go to reversal after damage and I'm gonna turn on instead vertical jump. So the problem with always going for the command grab is if they read it, they can jump it and then they can go into a full combo. So you need something that can potentially beat uh, the button and the jump if you want to do a different option other than command grab, right? Because if they try to block, they're going to eat the command grab. If they try to press a button, they're going to eat the command grab. But if they jump, they get away from it. So what can you do here instead? So you're plus three. So you need something that can hit them grounded. That easy. Crouching light kick. That was a very exciting revelation. You see my dog Jojo is very excited to learn that he can do crouching light kick. So the idea basically here is you want to get a combo that can prevent people from jumping away. It's, it's super easy. Super common example, crouching light kick, jab, jab, and you can finish this combo with her quarter circle four light kick. So if they try to jump away, you can hit them with that instead. And of course you can start extending this. There you go. That'll build the metal. So this is the basic concept of the mix. You can do command grab. You can do a strike instead, which will beat buttons and jumping. You can also hedge your bets as well for, by going for throw. So throw will also beat them mashing buttons here. It's a less risky option than command grab. So you can do throw to beat the buttons. If they try to jump it thinking you're going to command grab, instead you can do like her quarter circle forward EX, I, I think is a good option. You, you do get a full combo in a lot of situations from this. I think you can do quarter circle four light is what it is. At least that, there you go. There's one option as well. So go for light combos, go for regular throw, and then anti-air them if they jump, and then mix in command grab. Those are your three basic options to do from, from this situation when you pull them in. Does throw beat EXDP there? No, EXDP obviously beats every option. If you think they're good at EXDP, you'd want to block and bait them. That's the mind game, right? If someone has a reversal, they could always throw in that option to blow up all of your offense. It forces you to hesitate on your offense. And they can use that hesitation instead of doing EXDP to press buttons, guessing that you're going to hesitate on your offense because of their EXDP. And, you know, the wheel of options keeps turning, right? This is the mind games. So that's why people are thinking actively about all the options that are on the table at any moment. And, you know, you're placing bets constantly. That's pretty much fighting games 101. Okay, let's try another one here. I think I saw at one point you can perform a dry rush for less drive gauge than normal, but couldn't figure out it out. If true, how do you do it and where can it be applied? So yeah, this is very true. This is something that a lot of people aren't utilizing. Even I'm not utilizing as effectively as I should, and I've been working on it. So most of the time people to do a drive rush in neutral, they'll press parry and then they'll dash. So basically I tapped parry 
or I held parry and then I uh, tapped forward twice and that gave me a draw rush and I let go. So if you look at my drive gauge when I do this, you notice how it's one and a little bit less than a, or a little bit more than a bar of usage. So you can see that second bar there, it's not fully lit up green. It's actually, it used a tiny bit of drive gauge. So it's one and a tiny bit of drive gauge to do this drive rush. However, if I do a different input, I can do a perfect drive rush, which, which uses exactly one bar of drive meter and it doesn't use that little bit extra. Instead of doing parry then dash, I can do forward, forward parry. So this will use exactly one bar drive meter. So you see there, the, the second bar of drive meter is fully lit up green and flashing. It uses exactly one bar drive meter. So this actually matters in some situations where you need to optimize your drive meter. That could be the difference between going to burnout or not, having that extra meter to do a certain option or not. Perfect drive rush, forward, and forward parry again, so. That's perfect drive rush. It used exactly one bar. This is imperfect drive rush. It's slower as well. Notice that there's a lot more startup because you flash blue first and then you turn green. If you do this input, it's a much faster uh, drive rush to perform. The amount of time you sit there glowing blue with the parry is vastly reduced. So you want to use perfect drive rush to catch your opponents off guard. It will make your drive rushes more sneaky and harder to react to and use less meter. Uh, a little bit of a harder input that you can sometimes mess up but definitely something you want to incorporate into your gameplay. All right, Wild Khan asks, here's one for you. Explain to me why people can interrupt my combos. Like, is, is it just character speed or is it just a simple opportunity based off frames? Because I find it hard to believe that I'm mid combo and they get priority out of nowhere while still blocking. All right, so I chose this one because um, I think Wild Khan just, he's not fully, doesn't quite fully understand the concept of a combo in Street Fighter, and I feel like maybe some people don't have this internalized. When you have a combo in Street Fighter, there is no way to escape a true combo. A combo is a combo is a combo. The opponent can drop the combo that they're intending to do, but there's no way to break out of a combo. If people are interrupting your combos, you are just dropping your combo. This is all on you. So you need to make sure that your combos are actual real combos that work, and then understand why you're dropping them if that's the case, right? So it, it, I think maybe combo is not the, the situation you're referring to. So you need to understand that there is no way to break out of a combo in Street Fighter at all. Does not exist. So I, I think some people, um, newer players don't always understand that concept. So if people are getting out of your combos, you're probably making a mistake. Hit the lab and make sure your combos are real combos and then understand why they're not working either. You messed up an input, you didn't time something correctly, they were too far away for the combo at that range. So you gotta really uh, try to figure out why these things are going wrong for you in a match. Yeah, so maybe he means block strings, I'm not sure. Block strings, you also have to just test. If you're trying to test block strings, all you gotta do, do reversal settings and then do block reversal, crouching light punch, put the count on one. So that means when the dummy blocks, they'll do a crouching light punch on block. Generally for most characters, the crouching light punch is their four frame fastest move. Then go to dummy settings and put uh, block all and switch block active. So this frame traps, I, I don't think Manon has any other plus moves besides like drive rush enhanced normals. You can increase the count settings to, to test them mashing at a later point in the block string. So if you want to test them like after this, what you can do, you can increase the, the count. So just have the dummy mash jab after things on block, and then you can figure out how to pressure the opponent much more effectively. All right, Mark here asks, are there generic rules for supers when trying to figure out which moves can be canceled into them? Or is it different for each character? For example, can all level three supers be used after OD specials? So yeah, this is actually uh, a really good question because there are some standard rules that you can actually apply with the supers. The, the rules are basically level ones you can cancel into from normals that are special cancelable. I think that's where the confusion comes in from. Not every normal is special cancelable. There's a few questions about this in uh, these tweets. There are some things in Street Fighter which are kind of just trial and error. They just want you to figure out the rules for each move. So for example, here's my level one super, quarter circle four times two. I can cancel that from, say, my crouching medium. I can do that from my standing heavy punch. I can do that, but I can't do it from my heavy kick my sweep, my standing medium punch. These moves are not special cancelable. So generally, if you can cancel a normal into a special cancel, you can also cancel it into 
a level one super. Level twos are very similar in that you can cancel them from normals that are special and super cancelable. So my level two, I can cancel it from my Sandy Heavy Punch. However, they also gain the property of being able to cancel from OD special moves. So I can do, um, I can do something like my, uh, maybe not that OD special move. Did I just learn something? Yeah, <laughs> I just learned something. It's from some OD special moves. So for example, my level two for sure, I can do it after my EX Spire, but I can't do it from EX Fireball. Similarly, I can't do it from my EX Command Grab, right? It won't let me cancel the Command Grab to a super. So some special moves, some OD special moves, you can cancel into level two, but it has to be enhanced with your drive meter, it has to be OD. So I have to use the EX version of it, the OD version. I can't do non-OD Spire into level two. The next tier then is level three. So level three, you can cancel into from normals, from OD special moves, but also from regular non-OD special moves. So this is why you see so many level threes in alt matches is because they have the least amount of restrictions from when you can cancel into them. So with a level three, I can do a basic jab combo and then just cancel the special move into the level three. So of course also some special moves you can't cancel to level threes, right? So I can't cancel, for example, my command grab to level three, just how it is. So yeah, those are the basic rules. Level ones from normals, Level two from normals and OD special moves. Level three is from normals, OD special moves, and regular special moves. Those are the basic rules for when you can use your supers in game. And uh, knowing when you can use the supers is actually very important. You wanna structure your combos around your OD meter, your drive meter, and your super meter as well. So knowing these rules can definitely help you optimize and use your super meter much more effect effectively. All right, Mickey G asks, how to how to I counter Kimberly's elbow drop mix up? I find myself constantly getting hit by it. Is there an OS I should be doing? Please help Lamau. So I don't necessarily have an, uh, a catch all answer, but I do have some concepts that maybe you can use with your character. Obviously I'm a JP main, so I'm gonna be focusing here on some JP style solutions, but I do have at least one idea. Okay, so here's the problem with uh, Kimberly's elbow drop. It's basically, uh, it's meant to bait your anti-air, right? So if she jumps in normally, I wanna do something like Crouch Fierce to anti-air from that range, um, or even something like Towards Heavy Kick I might do to anti-air with JP. But if she instead at that range goes for her elbow drop, my anti-air will whiff, and worse comes to worse. There you go, punish counter. So yeah, you attempt to anti-air her normally, and she does the elbow drop, you'll get punish countered. Here you can do Crouch Fierce, but here she instead does the elbow drop, you'll whiff, you get potentially punished into a full combo. There you go. So if you have a different anti-air, you could potentially cover both options. So if I use instead my heavy kick, I don't get a combo from it, but you see here, it doesn't matter what option she does. If you have something that goes more horizontally at this like 45 degree angle, you can cover both a regular jump in or the elbow dro drop from a distance. The other option is if you get close enough to it, she actually will be negative if you block it high enough. Um, so there I was plus three actually. I'm plus two, I'm plus three. So if you're looking at the advantage here, I'm actually plus. So depending on how she uses it, the frame data will be variable, but uh, you should practice it against different heights. If it hits you at different heights, uh, you actually can take your turn back if you block it. So it's a mix up. If she jumps at you, there's sometimes when you need to fight that urge to anti-air. I know for 99% of situations, you train yourself so hard to be able to anti-air on reaction. Then some characters come along and say, ha ha, you, you idiot, why are you trying to anti-air? Kimberly is unfortunately one of those characters, man. Uh, it can be frustrating to deal with, but that's her thing. She mixes her approach on the ground and in the air. Lab your options and see if there's something you can shut down both options with one answer. And then other times when you have to take the mix, sometimes just commit to blocking and then understand the heights where you can take your turn back. All right, let's see what Lance T Tastic has cooking up here. I don't understand the timing for combos, particularly canceling normals and buffering moves. Am I just supposed to input it as quickly and early as possible or wait for the hit to input the next move in a split second? Whenever I occasionally pull combos, it feels like pure luck. So I have a video on my channel. I have multiple videos really, but there's a, a video I have called, um, you know, uh, what are combos and how to perform them. And that goes over all the building blocks of a combo. I did it with Street Fighter V, but it applies 100% to Street Fighter VI. 
But one of the main things you're asking here is about special cancels. That is the term you're referring to here. You're wondering how do I cancel a normal into a special, which generally for most combo structures is done at the end of a combo. So to do a special cancel, all you have to do is synchronize your button timing with the special move. Your normal will be considered the first input of your special move. So if you do quarter circle forward and punch, you're gonna get the swipe. So if you look at my inputs on the left side of the screen here, down, down, forward, forward, and P. Light, light punch. There you go. Down, 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 forward, forward, and punch. Do this in a smooth motion and you end the forward into the punch. It'll give you the, the swipe. What I want to do is instead of having my first input of this quarter circle forward just be down, I'm going to make my first input be really down medium, which will give me my crouching medium punch here. So if you look at my inputs now, my first input of the special move is now down plus medium punch, and then I can do the smooth motion special move. So you should think of the special move input as really having an extra button in the beginning. Synchronize the first input of the motion with your normal, and then just do the special move as normal. So this is how I do my quarter circle forward uh, plus medium punch. It's just a smooth motion. And then to do it with the normal, I do the same thing, but the first input becomes the normal that I want to cancel from. So same idea applies when I'm doing it from like a jab combo. The first input of my special move is really my normal, then smooth cancel into the special move. So here's some tips if you're having trouble with that. A uh, great way to tell if you're doing a combo or a technique properly or not, have the opponent block after the first hit. If, if you do this, your, like your jab comes out and then the special move comes out and they block it. You didn't synchronize your normal plus special move properly. You did your normal early and then you did your special move late. They need to happen at one continuous smooth motion. So, if, but if you do something like this and your special move is not coming out, you're just messing up the input for the special move. There's almost no way I can do this too fast. For this one, I'm doing punch and then I'm immediately hitting down, down, forward, forward, punch. I can't do this so fast that it doesn't come out. That's impossible. As long as you hit the special move and complete it in time for the cancel window of your normal, it'll come out. So if it doesn't come out or it does this separate and they block it, you did it too slow, they weren't continuous enough. If you do it and the special move isn't really coming out, you're being sloppy with your inputs. And if you do it and it cancels and it combos, you did it just right, congratulations. So that's a special cancel. Linking, um, same concept applies. If you uh, try to link a move and they block it, that means you did it too late. If you try to link a move and uh, it doesn't come out, for example, if I try to link maybe uh, Drive Rush Crouching Strong into Crouching Strong, if I do it too fast, my second medium punch won't come out. See, I did it too fast there. If I do it too slow, they'll block it. If I do it just right, a link then I can combine that link with the special move now you have a link which you can then cancel that link into a special move with your special cancel and you have two building blocks for a combo links and special moves common strategy use dummy settings block after first hit if someone blocks your next move you did it too slow if it doesn't come out you probably did it too fast find your timing in the center it's really that easy I guess I should say it's simple it's not easy, it takes a lot of practice and muscle memory, so don't feel bad if you don't get it right away. You'll have a moment where it clicks if you keep trying, for sure. Simple, not easy. You gotta put some work in to get the muscle memory. Luna asks, is drive reversal useful for anything? I've hardly ever seen anyone use it, uh, nor utilize it. So sometimes whenever I see it used, I just shrug it off. Is there even a point in using it? Yeah, drive reversal is a pretty contentious technique right now. It is not that popular, but it does have some uses. It's just kind of difficult to get the timing correctly. Uh, I can say one use is for certain special moves. So I'll give an example of when it's pretty easy to know when to use. And that's against, for example, Lily. So Lily has a pretty obvious situation where you would it would behoove you to use your drive reversal. When stocked Lily has her Condor Spire here, and you see this one, it lets her get in and she's plus two frames. And then she has a command grab. So at this point, she can go for pressure, go for a command grab, and she basically gets to steal a turn on you. And it's a dangerous situation to be in. This, if you block this, this is a guaranteed uh, drive reversal. 
it, it gets her off of you. And in a lot of situations, this is probably a good use of meter because drive reversal costs two bars. She spent two bars getting in and one of her wind stocks. I'd say this is a pretty good exchange to, to knock her away. She loses one of her wind stocks, loses two bars of meter. You also lost two bars of meter. It's it's pretty good, pretty good trade right there. So especially me being a zoner with JP, uh, I find this to be an obvious situation. Yeah, you do that, get off me, I go back to zoning, right? So that's one of the types of situations where you might want to use drive reversal is like these obvious forward advancing special moves that you can clearly react to and you can choose to burn the drive reversal to safely get the pressure reduced because drive reversal is unsafe on block. So you can't just throw it out and random block strings. You wanna use it in situations where you can react and know it's going to work. The other common situation where you'd want to use drive reversal is in a situation where you can react to somebody doing a drive rush cancel. This is kind of tough because you have to react really fast but after doing a drive rush cancel from a normal, the opponent is committed to doing like an offensive action. You know, like they can't really cancel the block right away. They can cancel to other moves, but essentially if you react to this appropriately, it will punish their drive reversal or their drive rush cancel, which is good because they spend three bars to try to get an offensive turn and you spend two bars to get them off you. However, it's very difficult to actually confirm this in a real match. It's probably worth uh, trying to differentiate between um, the drive rush and empty low forward. That's the problem I have with this technique. So you see there, I reacted to it, but unfortunately I wasn't able to actually get the punish. There you go. So that's definitely one of the uses of drive reversal at a higher level but I, I will admit it's hard to react to. I think that takes a lot of practice. I think higher level uh, players will start using that a lot more, but otherwise use drive reversal on certain special moves where you get a guaranteed knockdown. Just use it when you can react is what I would say. Don't use it blindly. Double L asks, oh, this one's actually a classic. How do you consistently beat a player that does a block string, two LP, two LP, then jumps over you into a cross up attack? LOL, it's so annoying that I had to spam that same technique on other players. It's hard to respectfully anti-air it. This is a classic Street Fighter like 101 tactic. This is what you see in every Street Fighter game since the like the, at least the modern era, Street Fighter 4, 5, and 6. Super common, uh, tough situation to deal with when you're getting the, the basics down in a fighting game, in a Street Fighter game, I should say. Double L is a very, very strong DBFZ player, but everybody goes takes the lumps with, with Street Fighter when it comes to this situation. And the answer is air to air. We got to get Ken to demonstrate this. This is like Ken in bronze rank 101. Ryu also. This is this is so common. So your opponent's pressuring you. They mix in a jump. You go to do your basic anti-air and it just gets completely stuffed, right? Or you go to like DP them and your DP goes the wrong way. Classic, classic situation for Street Fighter. And there are character specific options, of course. But here is the mind blowing technique jump back jab <laughs> so you might have a different normal you want to press based on the character generally your lights are going to be your fast guaranteed options so if they jump from further away of course you can just anti-air normally it's not a problem the problem is these block strings set up the specific spacing to make your anti-airs whiff and them to land cross-ups so universal answer jump back to light will beat most of these options uh character specific answer if you have something like a dp you can learn cross cutting. So one option to do a cross cut DP is walk forward and then half circle back last second very quickly. So I'm holding to the right and then I'm swooping down into a half circle back motion. So you walk underneath them and then you do uh, the cross cut here. That's a Ken specific option. Oh, another universal option though. You can dash under. You can also commit to walking under as well, if you're ready for it. So you can get out of the situation, but you just gotta be prepared for it, essentially. It's not always easy to be ready for it, you gotta think about it. Uh, but yeah, jump back jab is the go-to easy option for sure. All right, Banky asks, what's my general go-to for beating raw drive rush in neutral? This is a very tough question to answer because I don't think there is a go-to. Drive rush is a very, very strong technique because it is so variable and how it can be utilized. It also depends on the character, 
It depends on the range. It depends on their timing. It depends on the button they press. There's just so many variables that there is no uh, good one size fits all answer. I can try to show you some options that I use, but I don't have I don't have an answer for you. This is Drive Rush at Street Fighter 6 right now. If you solve that uh, problem, you solve the game is uh is my opinion so if they're about you know this sort of distance from me one option i'll commonly use is uh crouching medium punch if they're spaced out to a degree and they're going to approach with a medium i feel it's better to use mediums to try to interrupt them because what i find is when i when i try to use a uh, i try to use lights it tends to whiff and not work properly so yeah at this distance one common problem is this right here you react to the green and then you press jab and it just whiffs and they get a full drive rush punish counter on you and you end up taking more damage more drive meter damage and you just feel salty about it this happens to me all the time at this range so i don't really like lights when you're they're more spaced out because of that issue you can maybe delay it but it's very difficult to find that sweet spot uh when you delay when you try tr to challenge with jabs because they can compress their button early and slide into you with all these active frames. It's just a really tough spot. I feel using longer range normals at a distance is ideal because you can hit them from further away before their move becomes active. So at this range, I like to do crouching strong and I'll do something like if I see it, I'll do crouching strong buffered into drive rush cancel myself so I can get a full combo from the punish, right? Uh, and that's pretty good for most standard drive rush approaches from this range. You know, you'll, you'll interrupt them and uh, you'll get a punish or, you know, do something just buffer into a special move like that. However, they can then mix up their approach and then do something like drive rush jab to make it happen much faster. Like that's so hard to check, man. So the thing about immediate drive rush jab is that it has a range limitation. So it'll just whiff from out here. Uh, but if you're in this range, it's very strong. To, it's very hard to deal with. You might just have to take it at that point. So if you're a little bit further out, I would say try checking with mediums. If you're up close, then you can try using jab on reaction. So that's when it's safer to use jab is when you're up close. So those are the two ranges where I kind of compartmentalize my options. Closer, I'll use jab. Maybe like half screen away, I'll use uh, my mediums, but there's no guaranteed answer. They have a lot of ways to mix up this approach. And also it's character dependent, uh, option dependent. So not an easy thing to deal with, but those are the two things I kind of think of. Up close jabs, far away mediums. Good luck. Havoc says, I'm new to fighting games and I've started playing modern, which I really like. Should I learn classic to avoid getting hate for the majority of the community? And uh, Abdart says something kind of similar. Are modern controls really that bad? I'm new to Street Fighter and I'm really enjoying some characters in modern despite the limitations. I tried classic and they just didn't click for me yet. I struggle with the six attack button layout, not the motion inputs. I like using them actually. What you need to understand is that playing for the validation of others is always a losing matchup. You will never, ever, ever, ever get the respect of your peers that you're looking for or the validation you're looking for by looking for other people to respect what you do in any competitive game, and that's just life. Listen, I've been playing fighting games for over 13 years. I have, you know, my accolades under my belt. I get hate comments daily from people calling me carry to scrub, terrible. It, it doesn't matter what you do. I've never played on modern. I play on classic. It doesn't matter what you, they're gonna they're gonna move the goalposts no matter what. No matter what you do, the goalpost will shift. So what my advice would be is don't play for the devalidation of others. It's simply that. In fact, I almost don't even want to respond to these kind of comments because I feel like this is still reinforcing the same mindset. I'm validating your choice. Uh, I think you need to shift your perspective and just do what makes you happy. <laughs> so I almost wanted to ignore this to begin with because I, I think I'm still feeding that mindset, to be quite honest. Uh, don't care what other people think about your gameplay. Now, if you were to ask me what's optimal for winning, then maybe I could give you some perspective on that. I think modern does have some advantages, but so far it's kind of shaken out to be mostly not that good due to the fact that with a lot of characters, it's character specific. Depending on the character, you're missing a lot of key moves, you have reduced damage, but you do gain the benefit of having much faster reaction times with your special moves and especially your supers. So I feel like Luke Modern is very good in some matchups, for example, and maybe Geef Modern might have some secret sauce there. So far, it hasn't shaken up to be that effective at, at, at a higher level, 
Um, we'll see how that goes with time. But play with what you want to do. Play to achieve whatever goals you set forth. Fuck all the rest, dude. People are going to hate no matter what. The goalposts will always shift. Even someone like me. Listen, if you pl play against me and I get salty, you think I won't say some dumb shit and discredit you? Don't worry about what I say. Don't worry about what anyone says. That's the, the best advice I can give you. Uh, if you like modern and you want to play in modern, play in modern. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. And, and, and hate from the majority. You got to. I think it's something that's important to remember is the majority of people who dabble in Street Fighter and fighting games, they're passerbys. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people will play for a while. They'll just casually hate on things because that's what people do when they play games and then they'll leave. Like, don't take it seriously. <laughs> If you want to stick around and keep playing the way you play, go ahead, dude. I would prefer people didn't hate. It's just the nature of competitive games that people get salty and want to scapegoat things and they'll project their insecurities and their frustrations onto you. Happens all the time. Do your best to not let it affect you and uh, play with a growth mindset. I think that's all the questions I'm going to be answering for this video. There's so many more questions on here. I might do another one of these videos and tweet out again and try to answer some more questions. There's just too many to answer all at once. If you have any questions, be sure to follow my Twitter for the next time I do one of these types of videos. And thank you guys for watching. Peace.